What is up, YouTubers? It is I, Henry. I know I said that I would come to you with my next deck being a Mecha Phantom Beast Link Quasar deck, but one, I put it on hold because I made this deck instead, and two, I just got rid of the Mecha Phantom Beasts. They weren't working out that well, and in that deck, it's going to be just true to engine instead of Mecha Phantom Beast. But I'm going to get it to you. Don't worry. I'm still going to get you a Quasar deck. Just not yet, okay? So I'm going to be profiling ABCs. I went to a locals this yesterday actually the day before this video would be posted and i forgot that i had the abc engine from when the deck first came out and i was like you know what if i can get five of the cards i need to make abc distrito i'll just throw it together before the tournament and so i did and i threw it together and it was the first time ever playing the deck and i ended up getting second at the locals so in testing it was really well there are some cards that i will remove and put other cards in for just because they're not needed so, I'll explain those when I get to them in the profile. So, here we go. 3A, because Pot of Desires is a card, and you don't want to banish all of your pieces, so you have to run three to always have at least one. And, I mean, there is the possibility of you banishing all three, but that's very low, because you'll always search an A or something. And so, basically, when it goes from field to grave, you add an ABC to your hand. 3B, no matter what, you have to run B at 3 because it's your main piece searcher other than Union Hanger. So you run 3B. And then, not 2, but 3C. People run this at 2 because they don't see it as that good. But in Link format, with the ability to summon a piece from your hand, it's so much better. And again, Pot of Desires being a card, you need to run this at 3 to reduce the chances of you banishing all your pieces. So you run three of each piece just to make sure Pot of Desires doesn't banish them all and you have the consistency to continually see at least one piece to start your combos. A unique choice and tech that I put into the deck is two Photon Thrashers over Gold Gadget or Silver Gadget because Gold Gadget and Silver Gadget both take away your normal summon and they can be Veilered or they can have their effects negated, right? Photon Thrasher, it's an inherent summon, 2100 beater, and does, it doesn't use a normal summon, it's a special summon. And it works so good with Distrito. It's, my thought process for running this was mainly for Distrito and not using a normal summon, rather than the gadgets. Uh, in one of the games, I summoned this, and then it was max seed, so he stopped the Distrito play. So I just set two traps, passed turn, I, had a 21, or I attacked over his monster first. And so I passed turn with two traps and this, and I stopped his play, and then I went off. So I basically just avoided the max seed. And if I were to a gold gadget, he would have maxied the gold gadget in response to its effect, and he would have at least drawn one. With this card, he didn't draw any. So, Photon Thrasher is just a lot better card than the gadgets right now, if you ask me. And if it ever, it's ever, if it's ever dead in hand, you just discard it with Ravine or uh, Twin Twisters. And I did say this is a ABC Distrudo build, so one Dark Worm and two Distrudo. The Dark Worm functions just like your Photon Thrasher. It's there to easily get Ancient Fairy. You have no cards, so you special summon this from your graveyard. And Ravine lets you get both of these in the grave. So if you draw this, if you draw Dark Worm, you pitch Dark Worm, send a Distrito to Graveyard, and then you go Ancient Fairy Dragon. That's the most basic combo. So Photon Thrasher and Dark Worm have the same thought process behind them. One Gofu, because it gets you to your links easily. Your Deco Talker, it's a free Deco Talker. Hand Traps, just like the Sylvan build, I still don't have two Ghost Ogres. Nobody has them. I don't know why anybody that does has them, have them. They're using them in their deck. However, the more I use Effect Veiler, the more it comes up. So, with the cards that I change in this deck, I'm just going to keep the two Effect Veiler and then add two Ghost Ogres by taking out... Uh, some cards in the deck. And then to round off monsters and hand traps, one maxi, because drawing's amazing! On to spells. You have the three union hanger, again, your main searcher of your pieces other than, uh, with B, and just the ability to equip a piece is amazing and get two piece effects rather than just the one. And you run two dragons ravine. So good with the Strudo. You have to run this. A lot of people run it at three. I don't see the need for three because I'm basically robbing, running six copies of Ravine and then seven copies of Union Hanger. And when you make Ancient Fairy Dragon, 
you're basically going to see either this or Union Hanger. Either way, you don't need it at 3. 2 is just fine. 3 Terraforming to get your field spells faster, along with 1 set rotation. Now, you see that I only run 5 field spells, which I use, and a set rotation. If I'm playing my opponent, I'll just give them the 3rd Union Hanger if it's not a mirror match. If it is a mirror match, then I'm going to have to side in a field spell. But... I don't know. I didn't run into any mirror matches, so this was fine. I just kept it in the whole time. But you can side a useless field spell in your side deck for the mirror match or something like that. Two Dragon's Ravine. This is one card I will change. I uh, You only need one, one Dragon's Ravine. I ran two because I wanted to ensure consistency. But I'll probably cut the second one for a Ghost Ogre. So just one ra Dragon's Ravine. Because Dragon's Ravine with Foolish, it's... I basically ran three Foolish Burials in the deck. You only need two, because you have the Dragon's Ravine. So. Two Pot of Desires. It banishes top ten from your deck face down, and then draws you two cards. You use this to draw into your combo pieces. Uh, three, you would banish your whole deck. Never run three. One, you wouldn't see enough. Two is basically Goldilocks here. Two Twin Twisters. Back removal also gets rid of your dead Photon Thrashers. Regeki, board clearance, of course, if you're going second. And then I run one Solemn Morning, one Solemn Strike, one Time Space Trap Hole, and one Treacherous Trap Hole. My thought behind these two was that I, I was thinking about running Reflasia when I was making that right before the tournament. But then I realized I didn't have room for Reflasia, so I was just like, screw it, I'll just keep these in here anyway. Because I can use Treacherous Trap Hole to basically remove the materials they're going to use for a link summon and then and then they would just have wasted two materials or time space trap hole basically you use this after they summon their link monster i did this to the spiral deck that i played against i did this to his double helix he basically went in double helix and i played this and he basically just wasted materials and had nothing else he had no he had no extensions after that so that's the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. I will probably take this out though for a third Ghost Ogre. And then this might come out for a second strike. Probably second strike. Onto the side deck. Pretty standard side deck. I didn't really have anything fancy in here. Uh, I was missed. There should be two Deco Talkers, but I didn't have two Deco Talkers. So Gaia, which I'll show you, is going to be my second Deco Talker. So, of course, you run the three ABC Dragon Buster. This is your win condition, your boss monster, your... You need to run this at three. Anything less is bad. You have to, if, you, if you don't run this at three, you don't know how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And you should just quit. One Ancient Fairy Dragon, because it starts your combos. Don't judge me for a common. I just took whatever I could get before the tournament. One Black Rose, your most expensive board clear. Diamond Dire Wolf. This is good because it has the ability in your extra link zone to detach, destroy itself, and destroy a card. So you you get material, you get your you make this with your pieces. You get pieces engraved from it, and you destroy a card your opponent controls. Tornado Dragon. It just deals with backer on either player's turn. It's basically a twin twister on legs. Baguska, skill drain on legs. You basically can stall for three turns with or two turns with two three turns with this card. So it's not bad. So I'm only running three Xyz monsters in this deck, guys. I'm not running Suki or whatever, the light that lets you draw two cards. I'm not running that anymore. From when I first made the deck, when it came out. You run the one Link Spider, because it helps you going into Deco Talker with Gofu. Two Proxy Dragons, Germans. Oof, sexy Germans. Uh, you use one to make Deco Talker, and you'll probably use the one to make Warload or something like that. Uh, you never really use them for their effects, but you can, so they're nice to have. A Cossack Magician. I like a Cossack Magician because you just take two of your pieces, you get them engraved, and you summon this, and you bounce cards. And it doesn't target either. So if your opponent has a Deco Talker, you can summon this using the Deco Talker arrow that it points to, and you bounce the Deco Talker back, and they lose a Deco Talker, and you're 
your Gucci. One Gaia and Deco Talker. Gaia is going to be Deco Talker. I didn't have a second Deco Talker, so I ran Gaia. Uh, never saw this card. Never, ever. If it was a second Deco Talker, though, I would have pulled it out against True Dracos and probably would have forced a game three. But that was the, that was the only deck I lost to. I lost to True Dracos because uh, I didn't have a second Deco Talker. That was really it. And then drawing off the extra deck, one Borlo Dragon. This card won me game three against Spirals along with DD Crow. So he had his own Borer load, and he had Sleeper equipped with Last Resort, and he had res he basically had the the Spiral Lock with a Borer load, and he had taken my decode right. So I made Borer load. I made Borer load, and I took his Borer load, and then I used his Borer load to take a Sleeper, and then I used his Sleeper to get over my Deco Talker, and. I just won from there because he couldn't do anything because I had drawn a DD Crow that turn. And so he would have had to get over Bore Load by making at least a Link 3. And so I just banished the Quick Fix that he targeted to make a Link 3. And that's how I won Game 3 and beat Spirals. Decode saved lives during this tournament. So for the side deck, I ran... I actually didn't have a complete side deck. Hold on. I only had 11 cards in my side deck. But after the tournament, I came home and decided what I would side based off the locals and kept siding what I was siding because what I, what I had, though, out of that side was just amazing. So one Union Scramble. I didn't have this during the tournament, but and I wouldn't have needed it, but it's in case somebody plays System Down against me where they just get rid of all my sheens. Uh, I chose this over Pot of Acquisitiveness. You can do positive quickness and return three pieces to the deck and then draw one card. But I chose the Union Scramble because it summons three of your banished pieces and automatically lets you go into Buster. And then when it's in the graveyard, except during the tournaments there, you can banish it and then take one of your banished pieces and add this to your hand. So it gets you four pieces rather than three, like Acquisitiveness would. Acquisitiveness only gets you three. This gets you four, so that's why I cited this instead. Three Mind Crush. I'm definitely going to keep this. I didn't see it at all this tournament. I saw DD Crow a lot more. And DD Crow came in so clutch. But this is going to stay because it's broken. Two anti-spell. Because pendulums are still kind of a thing with pendulum magicians. Your third twin twister for back or heavy decks. Two gamma seal. This wasn't in the side deck. Until after... Because I was playing some 60 card spiral dark engine dark I don't even know what it was. It ran Mallies, Spirals, Armageddon Knights, Distrito, a lot of a lot of shenanigans. But anyway, uh, I won game one and game three against him. I lost game two to Chaos Hunter because he pulled Chaos Hunter out on me. And so these are in here to just get over Chaos Hunter. I'm gonna put these down here. Three Lancey. Lancey is broken. You have to run. You have to side this at three. I never saw it, cause I, but I never got even the match. So it didn't matter. But you have to side this at three. Not only does it work on the mirror match and stop your opponent from banishing, it stops evenly matched, honestly, because neither player can banish during that turn. So you have to side this at three. It's, it's your evenly matched out. Two DD cards. This is the MVP of the. This is the MVP of the side deck. Just saying that now. It won me two of my matches against Spirals, and that weird Dark Spiral deck. Because against Spirals, I banished this quick fix in game three. Game two, I banished some target in the graveyard that Spirals had. And that's how I won game two. I won game two and three against Spirals. And then um, I game one against the dark. I didn't have this. I cited this. One. Game three, actually. I saw, I saw both of these. So on the first one, he tried to Mally me. Or, yeah, he tried. No, he tried to Strudo. So I banished, he paid the four, he paid half his life points, paid the 4,000, and I banished his Distrudo. So he just lost half his life points for nothing. And then he tried doing, he tried getting a Mally in Graveyard, and then he tried to activate Mally's effect, and since the banish isn't cost, you just declare the effect, I chained DD Crow to banish the Mally, and he just, he just conceded from there, I won from there. On the last card in the side deck, is just a fun, it's literally one Jack Frost, it stops, I, I didn't, I didn't have this in the side deck, but... 
going home and thinking about it, somebody told me about this. It stops the spiral lock because when they attack with sleeper directly, you summon this, it doesn't target. The sleeper and this gets face down. So the whole lock goes away because they can't destroy two of your cards on your turn. And then you can just use this as, you can just flip it back up and use it as link material. So it's broken. You, you, at least one. Come on, guys. You only side one, but it's broken. So that's it for the deck profile. Don't forget to hit that like button. Smash it, please. At least, I don't know. I've never gotten more than 100 likes. That sounds pretty sad, but at least, at least give me 10 likes. I'm aiming really low with this one, guys. Give me 10 likes. And then post any thoughts in the comment section below. If you have any requests, I probably can't make the deck if you make a request, but I can make it online, and I can give a deck profile that way. Uh, if you have any suggestions to the deck, just let me know. And then don't forget to support me and hit that subscribe button. I'm out. This was ABC. Oh, that was really bad. Oh, well. This was ABC Destrudos. Thanks, guys. Peace.